I'm Bob Hugan, and I approve this message. This morning, meet the red candidate in the blue state who is out to defeat scandal scarred Senator Robert Menendez, who levels ethics charges of his own against his challenger. We'll hear where Bob Hugan stands on the issues in New Jersey. Now, from 42nd and 2nd, this is PIX11 News Close Up with Marvin Scott. Good morning, everyone. Ethics, it's proving to be a dominant issue in the race for the U.S. Senate in New Jersey. Incumbent Senator Robert Menendez is vulnerable, having survived a corruption trial after the jury failed to return a verdict and a harsh ethics rebuke from his congressional colleagues. He is facing a re-election fight by his Republican opponent, a wealthy former former pharmaceutical executive Bob Hugan, who Menendez accuses of putting profits over patients by ripping off cancer patients, raising the price of new cancer drugs. So I'm pleased to welcome this morning to PIX11 News Close Up, New Jersey senatorial candidate Bob Hugan, who's already shelled out over $15 million, most of that going towards television attack ads. Good to have you on the program. Marvin, great to be with you, and good morning. Is uh, Yes, we're making sure the people of New Jersey have a choice in November and understand the facts in this race. Now, you've saturated the airwaves for the last couple of months with these attack <clears throat> ads against your opponent. Is this going to be your strategy from now until the election? It's about seven well, weeks from now? You know, I think, Marvin, the people of New Jersey deserve to understand the facts. And the facts are 25 years in Washington and New Jersey's dead last. We get the least back from Washington of any state in the country. And you combine that with a track record and a character of corruption. His best friend, 67 felony convictions, defrauding Medicare, blinding senior citizens with unnecessary medical procedures, corrupt and ineffective. The people of New Jersey need to understand the facts, and that's what we're doing. Now, you're a former Marine. All right, you're, that's your attack, and that's your mode. But you're a former Marine, so you know what it is to really put up a good fight. But you're, aren't you fighting an uphill battle here in New Jersey, which is dominantly Democrat. You've got 900,000 more Democrats than Republicans, and also a state which is so anti-Donald Trump. Yeah, you know, you know, Marvin, first of all, as a Marine and a, a family of Marines, honor and integrity matter. How you live your life and you walk the walk, not just talk the talk. So I've been somebody my entire life and focused on doing things the right way with high values and the, and the proper integrity, et cetera. But let's be clear, the people of New Jersey deserve better. And, and they're recognizing it. When you look at the polls today within the margin of error, people recognize when they've been disserved and underserved and embarrassed. This is a senior senator, the role model for our children and grandchildren, doing the kind of things he's done. And, and, the, and the Senate Ethics Committee, bipartisan, saying violated federal law, abused the power of his office disgraced the Senate, embarrassed all of us. That's, that's a very strong message, and you're going to keep hammering away at that. But, but has, he has, let, let's, let's give devil his due, that he has amassed an impressive record for the state of New Jersey in his years in the Congress, hasn't he? I have to tell you, Marvin, I just don't believe that's accurate at all. Think about it. He's been in Washington for 25 years, 16 of those years with a Democratic president, and New Jersey gets the least back of any state. We are dead last. We get the least back of any state in the country, and it's worsening. So when you think about it, are we better off today than we were 25 years ago when he started in Congress? Is Washington working more for the people of New Jersey today than it did 25 years ago? Unfortunately, the answer to all these things is no. Okay, I want to get and find out from you how you will make things better for the residents of New Jersey. But first, let's get this, these attack heads out of the way. I want to show our viewers part of your one of your ads and one of his let's take a look at that right now bob menendez indicted by the obama justice department got big money from big pharma and voted against cheaper generics bob menendez corrupt ineffective doesn't deserve to be re-elected bob hugan's company was sued for putting cancer patients in danger by hiding information about potentially fatal side effects putting cancer patients in danger by hiding potentially fatal side effects. Hugan's company was sued for being deceptive and dangerous. They settled by paying $280 million. Would you like to respond uh, to that? Yes, Marvin, let's be clear. The company Celgene changed the life of so many hundreds of thousands of cancer patients, transforming terminal diseases to chronic diseases, 
walk the walk, investing over 40% of its revenue back into R&D, turning terminal diseases into chronic diseases. And because of those investments, now on the cusp of curing those diseases, at the same time, had the most compassionate patient assistance program in the world. That company walked the walk. Those are lies and mischaracterizations. I'm proud of everything I've done in my life, personally and professionally. I stand behind what I did, and the company made a difference for cancer patients every day. If you and your company did nothing wrong, why, why make a settlement of $280 million? Yeah, listen, b business isn't always easy when you're a large company. And these are allegations from t almost 20 years ago. There was no allegations post that were substantiated in the trial past, uh, potential trial past 2005. And everyone from the company is either retired or retiring. And the company made a commercial decision to put this behind them and not distract management. The company did nothing illegal. There was never illegal marketing, never hid side effects. The company is one of the most uh, American icons of doing the right thing for cancer patients. And it's created thousands of jobs in New Jersey. This company is a treasure for our country. And it's embarrassing the lies and mischaracterizations. Why, why was the settlement sealed? I, I think it's just a normal process of commercial transactions. There is nothing that I've ever said that I wouldn't speak publicly about. I, I, Mar Marvin, I lived my life with integrity and honor. I'm proud of everything I've ever done in my life. I'm not embarrassed to talk about anything. I've done the kind of things that make a difference in life. And that's why I'm running for office, because New Jersey people haven't been served. We've gotten the short end of the stick for so long. New Jersey deserves better. And my campaign, and when I'm senator, I'm going to fight hard to do better for the people of New Jersey every day. What I'm attempting to do is get you to respond to the charges being leveled by your opponent, right. who will be on this program next week, and he will defend himself. Now, one of the questions I know he has raised is if there's nothing to hide, would you be willing to release the videotape of your deposition? Yeah, listen. I, I have nothing to hide. I can assure you of that. So would Marvin. you release that? The, video the question then? is, I, I'm not in control of all of that. I don't, I don't work at the company anymore. But I have nothing to hide, and I'm glad for anything to be released or disclosed. But let's be clear. Let's be, let's be clear about what we're talking about here. We're talking about a senator who's been in Washington for 25 years. What is he talking about? What he stands for? This is a guy whose best friend, 67 felony convictions, defrauding Medicare. And, and Bob Menendez has failed us on health care. There are so many things we need to do to transform health care, to make it more valuable, lower costs, better outcomes. And he's done nothing for us. Let's be clear. I have a track record of delivering results, working with others together bipartisanly to get things done. He hasn't done anything for us on health care or anything. Last question in this area. I want to ask you about those drugs. It's been alleged that you increased the price of cancer drugs as much as 88%. Is that true? The, the, let's, let's be clear. Celgene, <clears throat> the most generous patient assistance program, invested in R&D, increased R&D spending during this period of time 37% a year. Nearly 90%, listen to this, nearly 90% of all Celgene patients paid $50 nearly about $50 per prescription. That's what I want to do for all Americans. If we could get all Americans to only pay $50 per prescription, we'd have a much better system in our country today. Last question before a break. Is it not true, according to the Bloomberg News Service, that you raised the uh, cancer drug Revlimid by 88% over a seven-year period? I'll tell you, what I, what I believe to be accurate is the price was raised about 7% a year at the same time R&D expenditures increased 37% a year to ensure that patients of today and the patients of tomorrow are going to have better medicines and the fight against cancer is tough and that company is doing a great job to win that war against cancer and, and also is the most compassionate company ensuring people have access to those medicines. Okay, we're going to take a break, come back, want to find out how if you are the next senator from New Jersey you'll make life much better. For all the residents there, we'll be right back with Bob Eugen. Back now with the Republican candidate for the United States Senate from New Jersey, Bob Eugen. Uh, you're a businessman, a successful businessman. You yeah. ran CEO of a pharmaceutical company for years. First entry into politics, why? I have to tell you, Marvin, I'm one of the luckiest people in America. I'm living the American dream. I was born in Jersey City, grew up in Union City, first in my family to go to college. 
even when after college, which opened the world to me, I knew I should give back and, and serve my community and serve, do something bigger than me. I joined the Marine Corps. And then I joined a company with six weeks of cash left. So I, I've taken the risks and challenges in my life that I, that I feel very good about. My wife and I last fall were talking about it and that we just thought it was really wrong that Bob Menendez would be reelected virtually unopposed. We were morally offended by that. And we said, here's a guy with a track record of corruption and 25 years of ineffective leadership in, in helping the people of New Jersey and that the people of New Jersey deserve better. And that's how I got into this because people in New Jersey are underserved and we deserve better and people should be proud of the center they have. Okay, well New Jersey hasn't had a Republican senator since 1972. That's a long Last time. Election. You call yourself a different kind of Republican. How different are you that you will make a difference for the people of New Jersey who pay the <laughs> highest property taxes and are bur being burdened so heavily in this economy? Yeah. It's 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 tough. It's an embarrassing where we are in New Jersey, how we've been mistreated by Washington. And I think we need to make a difference. We need to change that. Washington needs to pay its fair share. How would you change it? A couple of things. First, we're going to lead with honor and integrity and make sure that people respect the people representing New Jersey, not somebody who's running to stay one step ahead of the law. And so we're going to make sure that we put New Jersey first, all the issues. And one of the things that I've been encouraged by, I've been all over the state in this campaign, and I'm going down to South Jersey, North Jersey, and there are so many examples of where the people in New Jersey have gotten the short end of the stick. You know, we had 9-11, we had, we had Sir Hurricane Sandy, and we have this urban area security initiative, and Philadelphia and New York do these studies, and they include Bergen, Essex, Hudson, and Camden, Burlington, yeah. and, and Gloucester County in the studies, and the federal government provides money to support first responders for national disasters and, and terrorist attacks, and all the money goes to Philadelphia and New York not a penny for New Jersey. We get the shorter than the six so many times. I give you so many examples in infrastructure, in national defense spending. How we would need you to get this money back to New Jersey. We've got to use our vote in the Senate to stand up for the people of New Jersey, not for somebody else's politics or partisanship or wealthy donors that we support from Florida. So we've got to, we've got to make sure New Jersey gets its fair share. And that'll be your priority? New Jersey first, every day. I'm not, I have no special interest. I'm beholden to. I'm not resp any political organization made me the mayor and the councilman and then a congressman and a senator. I'm my own man. I'm going to stand up for the people of New Jersey every day. Now you're you're mostly financing this campaign on your own, are you not? Absolutely. All right. Oh, you also talk about. I know you're passionate about health care, and you talk about partisan health care. You, you say in New Jersey is not getting its fair share. How the American you, people aren't either. How would, how would you change things? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, Marvin, having been involved in the health care debate for a long time, we need to change. We have a health care system that was architected 70 years ago as sick care. We, we live in a different economy, in a different world today. And I'll tell you, the transformation of health care is in within, within our reach. 75 to 80 percent of the things that we need to do in health care is agreed upon by Democrats and Republicans, but the 20% pre prevent the people in Washington from coming together and getting it done. Partisanship has caused so many problems in this country. We need to work better together to put people first. In healthcare, there's so many things we need to do. We need to decentralize Medicaid. We need to reform payment system in our country so we incentivize health as opposed to paying for activity and usage. I have ideas how we're going to improve outcomes, lower costs, including pharmaceuticals. We're things we can do now to make it better for the American people and all New Jerseyans every day. There's also a debate about Medicare for all. How do you feel about that? Uh, listen, I, I think we've got to improve the coverage, but we agree on 80% of what has to be done. How we pay for it is a separate issue. We need to reform the delivery system. I, I think we don't want the government to totally control health care. Look at the veterans program. As a veteran and two sons in the Marine Corps, it's an embarrassment and disgrace how we treat veterans' health care. New Jersey is actually even one of the worst. It's the least attractive state for veterans to retire in because we don't take care of our veterans. The Veterans Administration's health care should not be the template for health care for all Americans. We'd, we'd lose quality, we'd lose outcomes, and we would have no innovation and improvement in our systems. We need more competition, more choice, and we know what has to get done. We've got to have the political courage to work together with other, others, Democrats and Republicans. We know what has to be done. We need to get it done. The president failed to get his reform of health care into the Obamacare. There was a great talk about the pre-existing conditions in there. How would you, uh, how would you change well, that? Let's be clear. There's some things that are not 
we don't, will not fail on in any way, shape, or form. Pre-existing conditions, patients with pre-existing conditions must always be protected. We want our, our children up till they're 26 to stay in our health care plans. We need protections for those, for people who are most vulnerable in our society. But we need to change the system, not just on the edges. Affordable Care Act affected exchanges affect about 10 or 15 percent of Americans. We need to reform the delivery system to ensure that people get health care, not sick care. Let's make sure we incentivize people to do the right thing and encourage them and pay them to do it. There's so many things we can do to make health care better for all Americans. And come January, I'm going to work hard to bring people together to make that happen. Where do you stand on abortion rights? I'm pro-choice. I, I believe we should do more for adoption, but women should have the right of choice. I don't believe in late-stage abortions, but I believe in the right of women to have the choice. Now, speaking of that, was that's one of the issues in these confirmation hearings for uh, Brett Kavanaugh for the Supreme Court. Uh, are you as concerned as so many others are that if he makes it to the court, it's going to be a reversal of Roe versus Wade and, and more of that? I, I believe that's an established law that's there. And my view on jurists and, and judges should be that we want people who are going to be judges to fulfill the roles of the judicial branch, not legislate, whether on either end of the political spectrum. I think the test should be, are you going to interpret the law, not make, try and legislate from the bench on either political extreme? Do you expect him to be approved? Do you, do you think he's a good I, choice? I do, th I do see him. He's a very experienced, thoughtful jurist. I haven't heard anything that would say that I wouldn't vote for him today. I think he'll, he will be approved. Okay. Got much more to ask you. We're going to take a break. And uh, I want to ask you also about your ties to uh, President Trump and how that will impact your uh, effort to win the senatorial race in New Jersey. We'll be right back. Stay with us as Pixel 11 News Close Up continues. Back now with uh, New Jersey Republican senatorial candidate Bob Hugan talking about uh, this election. And you were an early supporter of President Trump. You had a, contributed to well, a I was a, del I was a delegate. delegate but I you was also actually supported Chris Christie. But uh, you also contributed, uh, I see, $100,000 to a super PAC backing him and $5,000 directly to his campaign. Anyway, you were supportive of him. How do you feel this is going to play out in New Jersey where there are areas that are tremendous anti-Trump sentiment. Well, I have to tell you, Marvin, uh, I think a couple of years ago we had, and we still have stagnation, we had stagnation in Washington and, and Donald Trump was going to bring disruption to Washington, but unfortunately it's brought, brought it totally dysfunction, not just a disruption, but dysfunction. And we need to bring good people to Washington who are going to work together bipartisanly to make things happen. And so I'm not happy with a lot of the way things are done in Washington. The president's done a lot of good things in terms of the economy, deregulation, 4.2% GDP. I was in Israel a few months ago, and, and you see the opportunity to really improve our national security of Israel and fight against Iran, to, trying to build a permanent military presence in Syria. So a lot of good things going. But a lot of things I don't agree with him. Certainly the way he does things, dividing people. We need to bring people together. I don't. I oppose offshore drilling off the coast of New Jersey. The $10,000 cap on state and local tax deductions is bad for New Jersey. We need to work to lift that cap. I called for Scott Pruitt's resignation months before he resigned because I think one of the greatest treasures we leave to our children, our grandchildren, is the environment, and we've got to make sure we do the right things to protect that environment. And so. I'm independent. I've been independent all my life. I was the only person in my class in, in Princeton to go into the Marine Corps. I joined a company with six weeks of cash left when all my friends said, don't go there. I'm taking on a race that because New Jersey deserves better. So I've been independent all my life. No, I'm not going to kowtow or do what other, anybody else says, political organization. My commitment is to the people of New Jersey, and I'm going to put the people of New Jersey first every day and every decision I make in Washington, and the people of New Jersey are going to be better off because of that. So can you tell those anti-Trump voters out there that you disavow your support of uh, President Trump? I, I have to tell you, Marvin, this race is about Bob Menendez versus Bob Hugan and what's best for the people of New Jersey. And I'm going to be with anybody, Democrat or Republican, who is trying to do good things for the people of New Jersey. This race is about New Jersey. The people of New Jersey deserve better, and I'm committed to getting them better. Do you disavow your support of President Trump? Listen, I, I, I think President Trump's going to be up for re-election in 2020, and that's what he's issued. He's got two years left. I'm campaigning for a six-year term to do something for the people of New Jersey. 
I, I'll make my decisions going forward and where I'm going to be, but I'm going to be for anybody that is supporting the people of New Jersey every way and every day that I can. Let's move on to some other issues. Where, where do you stand on the legalization of recreational marijuana? Yeah. First of all, I do believe we need criminal justice reform in New Jersey and in our country. And I do believe decriminalizing marijuana is part of that criminal justice reform. But I am opposed today to legalization of marijuana because I have not seen the ability of government to ensure the public safety. If you could tell me that the people driving our first graders to school in a school bus or driving New Jersey Transit, even though they're 10 or 20 minutes, half an hour late all the time, but they're driving those things that you can test and tell they're not impaired. But until you can tell me the public safety is not jeopardized by people being impaired by marijuana and we can test and stop that, then we should not have the government worsening the conditions. Additionally, people in, in, your, in the urban areas are concerned that this is going to be bad for urban youth also. So I think we need to make sure we understand the implications for urban youth issues related to legalization of marijuana, from a job opportunity for them, but also public safety should be government's first responsibility. And if you can't test and tell me that people are impaired smoked marijuana 10 days ago or two minutes ago, you need to have the test and ensure public safety is first before we go legalize it. Because I don't think Colorado has re reaped the economic gains that everybody's talking about. So let's be careful here. Let's do the thoughtful right thing. Let's talk about gun control. New Jersey has some of the toughest gun laws in the country. How would you implement this in, in a national basis? Yeah, listen, I, I think New Jersey has the toughest gun laws in New Jersey, and I think the people of New Jersey respect that, and, 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 we, and it's inappropriate. We need to make sure sportsmen have the right to continue to do their things, and we should have the right to defend our homes and our property. My sister taught in Union City, right across the river in Hudson County, retired there after 35 years. I have to tell you, I'm so beneficial, been a public school graduate, going to school not, uh, not worried about safety. Our priority should be teachers and children ensure they're safe every day so we can develop and live to their full potential. Has the NRA reached out in an effort to support you? You know, Marvin, what, I, what I've said be very clear, I'm not beholden to any special interest. I will not fill out anyone's questionnaire. But have they reached out to you? Uh, many people have reached out to NRA. us. NRA. I received questionnaires from everybody. And I will not fill out, I've, I received a questionnaire from the NRA. I have not filled out and will not fill out a questionnaire for any special interest group. In other words, you will not accept any, any support from the NRA? I, I will fill out no, I will not su accept support from the NRA. Okay. But I will not support from any special interest. When I go to Washington, I'm not going to be a captive of some political organization or be the captive of any special interest. I'm going to be there to serve the people of New Jersey every day. We've been short shrifted and, and got the short end of the stick for so long, 25 years, and we're last. We get the lease back from Washington. We need to change it for the people of New Jersey. They deserve better. I have to ask you this, because I read it somewhere, <laughs> an incongruity here. Wasn't there at one point where you supported Senator Menendez years ago? Bob Franks is a, was, was a, I don't know if you know Bob Franks, he ran for Senate, he was a congressman, and I was involved in the Health Care Institute of New Jersey, and I did co-host the fundraiser for Senator Menendez before I knew about all the things that he did with his buddy Sal Melgan that led to the 67 felony convictions and that. So, so a long time ago, before I knew the facts, wouldn't be the case today. We need change. It's time for change. Okay, we got my, my, my producer telling me we have about 30 seconds left, so I'm going to give you an opportunity Look right at your constituents out there, your potential constituents, and have the final word. Listen, I, I just think November 6th is a big day. New Jersey deserves better, not somebody who's running to stay one step ahead of the law. I've committed my life to working together with people to achieve results, and that's what I'm committed to do. Every day I'm going to work to make life better for all New Jerseyans. I'm a Jersey guy. I grew up here. I was born here. I raised my family here. I'm proud of New Jersey. We're going to make a difference for New Jersey. Thank you for your support on November the 6th. And I'm getting a wrap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> New Jersey senatorial candidate, Republican Party, Bob Hugan, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts and your positions with us. Thank Next you. Next week, we'll be joined by Senator Bob Menendez. We'll hear what he has to say. That'll do it for our program this week. If you have any comments or wish to see this broadcast again, log on to our website, pix11.com slash newscloseup. I'm Marvin Scott. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, everyone.